Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today we are looking at hella Power of the Elements reveals. We have uh, today we had all of the content creators doing their openings of the early boxes, and so because of that, we know the final imports as well as TCG exclusives. There's, uh, I think, technically 19 cards here we didn't have revealed already, so we'll be going through those. I'll be going through them pretty quick. We have a lot of cards to go through. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into this thing. Uh, real quick. So starting off here, we have Vanguard of the Underground Emperor. This is a Earth Reptile Level 8. When I first saw this, I was like, whoa, another Level 8 Reptile. Awesome. 26-22 for the stats. If a monster or monsters is sent from the hand to the graveyard, while this card's in the graveyard, special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Um, interesting effect. Needs to already be in grave. I, I guess I would say that... Um, uh, the Reptile deck or uh, Ogdoatic is already pretty good at putting any Reptile name in Grave um, with Snake Rain and stuff like that. But um, I don't. I wish this could also extend from hand, uh, so it wouldn't be as bad to draw or search. But I don't know. It's it's fine. It's a fine extender for sure. Moving on here, we move to Garura. Just so you know, we talked about this yesterday. It's a good Super Poly target. It's a good Nadir Servant slash Artemis Slay kind of target card. Draws you a card. And then super generic materials. Pretty good. Moving on here, we have a new Cybers monster. This card's actually real spicy to me. Um, so this is uh, Pit Knight Early. This is a uh, Cybers Link 2. It points to the right and up diagonal. And um, 1500 attack. Two effect monsters. When a monster this card points to activates its effect during the damage step, quick effect, target one effect monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn, change its attack to zero, also negate its effects. During the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed by battle or card effect and sent there this turn, special summon this card. Like, okay. Uh, I actually like this card quite a bit. I could see scenarios where you're summoning this, pointing up into your opponent's EMZ, so that way if they want to link summon, you'll be able to chain this and like negate their card, uh, potentially, in that uh, or something they control, which is pretty cool. Um, I could also see scenarios where maybe this is somewhat of an end board piece for something like uh, like Heat Soul Control. If you end with this on in Heat Soul, Heat Soul can just trigger whenever, or well, trigger can can fire off whenever, giving you pretty flexible scenarios for you to be able to fire this card off as like essentially an infinite and permanence, and then you also get the draw of Heat Soul. Um, very very interesting card. Also, the float is good. If it's destroyed period it just comes back on the end phase which means you can like load him into whatever zone kind of works if your opponent has something in the emz um i like this card quite a bit i actually might mess around with this card in cyber stacks for sure that's a nice little random card next up here we have moray of avarice so like kind of a combination of pot of avarice and moray of greed banish one face up fish sea serpent or aqua monster you control draw two cards you can only activate this once per turn this is interesting. Now, we already have something like Deep Sea Aria in um, the, like, water stratosphere, whatever you want to call it, aquasphere, um, which is falls into this weird category of, like, it's a searcher, but it's a searcher that already requires you to put a water monster in grave. So, um, it's okay, but, like, uh, and part of the problem is they don't have perfect sea serpent targets yet in the game that... Um, would act as like a really strong follow-up if it was then i think deep cr would see more play because it'd be like oh, okay well my deck would try to play through interruptions i have an insanely good sea serpent that would help me like continue to barrel through um so once i bait negates bait interruptions hand traps or whatever then i would fire aria but i just don't think we have an awesome awesome sea serpent target that helps us play through interruption like that uh, but if we do that card gets better kind of same idea here is like bait some things out if i make Hulk and it gets well Hulk's a bad example if i summon some waters you know what i mean normal summon deep sea diva and it gets negated you play so many extenders in a in a mermail ish deck boom send the diva draw two cards hopefully that helps you get even more you know just power to just completely just play right through and continue on with your day so very very interesting um you know banishing from your field obviously not as ideal as banishing from grave but still draw two is draw two this card could absolutely come up 
should water ever find its way into the metagame again. And also down the road, we're expecting another Atlantean uh, structure deck R at some point um, in the next year, year and a half, most likely. So that's also interesting. Moving on here, move to Mimesis Elephant. Special summon this card is an effect monster. It's a beast, earth, level 2, zero attack, 2,000 defense. It's also still a trap. And if this card is in the monster zone quick effect, you can declare one type and attribute, target one face-up monster on the field. It becomes that type and attribute till the end of this turn. That's not great, but not the worst thing in the world. We see a lot of decks that like need to make a monster and like to do so, they may need a certain type or attribute to kind of do so. So being able to like change stuff in certain matchups can be nice, but outside of that, nothing too crazy. Uh, it's fine, but it's another interesting like trap monster to the pool. Uh, moving on here, we move to the goatee cards. Okay. So these are all of those. Um, Let's zoom through these. You can banish this card you control. This is Paces, low T of the go uh, Light of the Goatee. Uh, it's a fish tuner level two zero zero. Okay. Banish this card you control as cost. Special summon a fish from your hand, except for itself. That's it. During the standby phase of the next turn, after this card was banished, special summon this banished card. Um, during your opponent's main phase, if this card was special summon this turn, you can quick effect immediately excuse me after this effect resolves synchro summon a fish synchro monster using cards uh using this card you control now that's pretty good so theoretically if you can just get this card banished on your turn it will come back on your opponent's standby phase and it will have this effect now it's only during main phase so if you're putting something to mess with you during the standby um they can probably turn this card off but i still quite like this i mean even pairing this with Whatever we just looked at, Moray of Avarice. Even if you're not going to use it to extend a card from hand, you could just normal summon this card and then banish it to draw two, and it's still coming back. Um, so that seems pretty good. I think this card's solid overall. It's also, uh, unfortunately, it's only the turn it summoned, so you can't just like halk this card out and then pass uh, because it wouldn't have been special summoned that turn uh, while your opponent's doing their shit. So. Um, Unfortunately, you wouldn't have the interruption there. But not a bad card. Very interesting. Uh, kind of in, in line with what we expected. Next up here, we have Sheaf, Fairy of the Goatee. Another fish level 2 tuner. 0, 500. You can banish this card from your grave, then target a fish you control against 500 till the end of the turn. Okay. During the standby phase uh, of the next turn after this card was banished, special summon this card. And during your main phase, you can synchro summon using this card uh, into a fish. Very cool. So this effect isn't ideal, right? This isn't, effect isn't great, but it's a self-banishing effect. So you don't even need an outside way to banish this. This card will still just pretty much bring itself back um, and then be live for that, that synchro summoning uh, ability again. So very cool. Uh, so kind of same idea there. Then we move to Enoch. This is a higher level monster. This is level six fish, 2100, zero defense. Um, if this card is normal or special summoned, target one of your banished level four or lower fish monsters and special summon it in defense position, but negate its effects. You can banish one fish monster from your hand or face up field to add a goatee trap from your deck to your hand. Interesting. And you can only use both these effects once per turn. So, uh, what I don't love here is this guy is a level six brick as Fuck. I mean, I guess the first one we looked at, Paces, can technically summon him from hand. But outside of that, I mean, he has no way to summon himself. But when he's summoned, he can technically uh, get you an extension. And then by banishing another fish uh, from hand or field, you, you can search the goatee trap, which we'll look at in a sec. So interesting. That one's just fine to me. It's not an extender, so it's pretty bricky. Moving on here, we have Ascon, the bicorned goatee. This is a level uh, eight synchro, 2700. Uh, completely generic, which is cool. If this card is synchro summoned, you can target a fish you, monster you control and one card your opponent controls, banish them. If this card is banished, you can banish a fish monster from your graveyard to special summon this card. That's pretty good. That means just making this card as long as you have a fish in grave. It means like you get to banish a card your opponent controls. Um, and then this card just it just comes back anyway. And if you're banishing something like another goatee card, it's coming back on the next standby phase regardless. So this card's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's going to help you synchro climb. I guess the idea is like summon this guy and then you want to quick synchro into the level 10 on the opponent's turn maybe. Which is pretty cool, I think all things considered. 
Uh, speaking of which, you have go to, yeah, so he's a level 10. So you want to synchro climb, you want to make this guy, and then you want to climb into this. You could also make something like the, what is that card called? The white or a whale. Uh, I think it destroys all special summoned monsters or something when it's when it's synchro summoned, and it is a, a fish, so that's another thing you could go for. Um, pretty cool, and this guy banishes all cards on the field, uh, including himself, but I think he comes back. So it's that's what this deck does. Banish everything. And then everything comes back on the next standby phase. They're all like zero Boroses. They just want to come back on the next standby. So as long as you keep pushing the duel along, banishing things turn to turn, you're probably going to out-resource your opponent at the end of the day. Next up, we have the field spell. While you control a fish synchro, this card cannot be destroyed, banished, uh, or banished by card effects. Cool. Nice protection. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Banish a fish from your hand or grave to add a goatee monster from deck to hand. That's not bad at all. Unfortunately, like none of the goatee monsters in the main deck extend from hand, aside from paces require like being on field and needing another one in hand. So I don't particularly love the way you have to extend, but let's be fair, there are some other fish cards in the game that like already are like decent. Uh, secondly, if a fish monster is normal or special summoned to your field while this card's in grave, target a fish you control, banish it, and if you add this card. So, I don't know. This card seems like okay. It just seems like a like a mediocre field spell because it's just conditional, right? You gotta have a fish in grave to get the add. And you gotta give up a fish on field just to add this back. Um, I guess you do banish it, so it could... It, it works with the deck and the fact that you'll get the monster back on the next turn if it's a, a goatee monster, but still weird and the last goatee card as far as the new ones go is goatee chain banish one face up fish monster you control to special summon one of your goatee monsters that is banished in your deck in your hand or graveyard with a different name for the monster banished to activate this card but banish it when it leaves the field not a problem you're most likely summoning a goatee monster straight from deck anyway uh, so when it leaves the field being banished means it's just going to come back uh, so yeah, a lot of banishing, a lot of rotation on stuff when it is banished. This one seems to be the best card to get out the big guy. Yeah, the level 6. So that way on summon he could potentially extend you uh, another goatee monster from grave. But this is a trap. And this card negates the monster you summon. So even if you summon one of the small goatee guys, they won't have their quick effect, like synchro summon effect. So this being a trap is like kind of jank. It's good to like rotate turn to turn. But this deck seems really, really slow. Um, maybe it just needs, maybe you need to look at a lot of the fish pool. Uh, a lot of the shark stuff is fish based. So like you could also play potentially like an exceed slash synchro build where you can also rely on crag and control if need be. And some of the levels could be nice depending on uh, how they shake out. I'd be curious. And maybe there's even, a, there's no restrictions here too. So like maybe there's a world where you just kind of can splash some of this stuff into, a mermail-esque build, Atlantean mermail build, and like use this as another like synchro route uh, for end boards because I've I've heard that their boards aren't scary enough. I think they're fine because like if you're gonna rip two to three cards and then set up like two interruptions, I think you're gonna be in a pretty good spot. But I don't know, just kind of depends. Uh, so moving on from that, we have most of the imports here. So these are cards we've already seen before. We just didn't know they were going to get imported in here. Loris, Lady of Lament. I was very excited when this card was getting revealed, and then it ended up being pretty poop. I just think Lair of Darkness is already so slow, and this card is like a whole new level of slow for the deck. I just don't trust it, uh, but her artwork is cool. I'll probably pick her up anyway, just because I love uh, Lair. Then we get all the Morphtronic cards. I was talking about I was talking about a couple weeks ago how like, whoa, why are Shizu's cards in the Magnificent Maven set? Does that mean we're not getting the Earth Legendary Duelist at all and they're just going to import them other, uh, other ways? Yes. The, I mean, the answer is yes. We've got Telephone here. We've got Gadget Gamer. We've got uh, Scannon. We've got Earphon. Earphon's pretty interesting generic synchro too, giving like a big synchro monster two attacks. It's pretty good. Um... Uh, Power Tool Braver Dragon, one of the more generic ones, but probably applies more so to something like Infernoble, synchro-based stack that is based around equipped spells. This card could definitely be pretty spicy there. Uh, Morphtronic Converter, um, and then finishing up here with Life Extreme. Uh, the last thing to mention here is that uh, Destiny Hero Destroy Phoenix Enforcer is confirmed to be like the imported Starlight Rare. I don't know what the other whatever three of them will end up being probably a splite card probably a terralimance card and then maybe like 
Exosister sister Malpha, maybe my guess is, but who freaking knows? Maybe maybe it'd be um, Artemis Slay also. Who knows, though? Uh, um, but very cool. I mean, the imports are cool. I wasn't sure what they were going to do with, with, with the Earth Legendary Duelist set. It seemed really underwhelming. I just think they thought it's not going to sell on its own if it's its own set. So let's go ahead and import them elsewhere. I think this is a good idea, and I'm happy we're getting these actually way quicker than we would have otherwise. Um, so I'm happy about it. Um, we're going to get Ishizu's cards, and then it just depends where they want to import the Amazonas cards. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the Battles of Legend this year. Uh, but very cool. Some really interesting stuff here. Just going over the ones that I thought that were the most interesting. Interesting little um, reptile support card. I think the new Therion card's better, but cool. Uh, cool new Super Poly slash Artemis Slay target. This card's a really interesting new cyber support card. Technically, it doesn't even need to be cybers because you can make it generically. It's just cyber. So um, definitely a, a pretty interesting card there. Uh, More of Avarice, draw power for water decks. Really cool. That card's whatever. And then the goatee stuff um, is interesting. We, we'll have to see. Again, this is a new archetype. Keep in mind, whenever Konami does this, they're rarely ever playable out the gate. I think other than B Trooper, we haven't really seen a deck be playable. And that's more so because B Trooper had already such an awesome pool of generic insects already um but as we've seen next set we'll probably get a guaranteed seven more goatee cards we've seen it done with plunder patrol we've seen it done with b trooper we've seen it done with other stuff war rock uh, war rock didn't work out because that archetype just sucks but i think this archetype has a little more than war rock so we'll have to see where they go we'll have to see how good the seven cards in next set will end up being and if it'll be enough to push this deck to a playable level. I just think it's a little too slow. It doesn't get enough going uh, turn one. It's all reliant on like getting multiple summons, resolving multiple effects on the opponent's turn, which is good, but you still have to be able to do stuff on your turn because it looks like going second, this deck has like no way to, to have a chance versus a, a, a deck that's going to set up a decent board going first. So those are my thoughts there on everything. Sorry if I rambled too much, but we had a lot to get through today. That is the official final reveals for power of the elements i'd love to hear your guys thoughts whatever you want to let me know on uh, for any of these new cards or any of the imports whatever let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts there as well as just your general thoughts of power of the elements now that we know the official full card list for the entire set i'd love to hear what you guys are thinking there but I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me down the line. Uh, I also have a Twitter. Follow me there. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.